Hey, how's it going, everybody? How are you in 2021? So I recently listened to uh, Michael Kamen's score to Robin Hood, uh, Prince of Thieves. Uh, I've always loved Michael Kamen, but I never really thought about doing a mock-up of one of his pieces until I heard this track again recently. And yeah, hadn't heard it in many years, and it's just absolutely amazing. Uh, the theme is, you know, so simple, yet so rich and just so powerful. So I thought to myself, man, you know, especially when you listen at the, uh, the main part of the th of the main theme, in the intro with the fanfare with the trumpets, you can really hear, wow, such a such a unique recording. Uh, I don't know where they recorded it. Maybe uh, one of these uh, studios that don't exist anymore in Los Angeles. Uh, it's such a nice little kind of small, smallish, warm room. And uh, something about the trumpets, the way they just sizzle at this main part up there. Uh, which you're going to hear. Uh, it's just incredible. And I just thought, I wish there were any sample li libraries out there that could do this. You know, because most of them will have the trumpet section in, thir you know, three people playing at once. So a three. Uh, and I want just the solo trumpet, the one guy playing that high note. And so for some reason, they aren't really sampling those to that extent where you can really make a realistic uh, the first trumpet player. Anyway, enough talk about that. Uh, I'm just going to play through this again. Uh, you've heard it maybe in the other video uh, where I just uploaded the piece. But now, let me just play it, and then I'll show a little bit what I did. And I'm going to lower this, because I have a tendency to uh, clip a little bit. Ah, there we go. Right, it's just the opening fanfare. Uh, I haven't done the whole piece, maybe I will, but it's mainly this part that just kind of grabs you when you hear the main theme. Uh, quickly, I'm just gonna go through a little of some of these basics that I use, some of these cheats, if you would, if you will. Uh, this John Cage cheat that I heard from uh, Ashton Gleckman many years ago. Uh, just an empty recording, obviously, of that piece because it's silent. Uh, and if you listen in headphones, you can hear Kind of like, just like the orchestral, the hall, and the the ambience of the audience. So that just helps, just for fun, to get a little bit of that realism uh, of players being there. And then I just have here a little bit of harmonics, just playing the brute um, of whatever key we're in. I actually forgot now what this piece is in. So this is just played very softly underneath, uh, just for some sort of, you can't really make it out, but there's just something there so it isn't completely silent and you're just like ah oh, yeah this is amples but if there's some sort of noise but you don't know that certainly helps uh okay so we got those little small tricks out of the way and now i'm just going to say a few things about when i listen to a piece for instance this piece robin hood uh when i try to make a mock-up of it i always do it by ear because it's just so much more fun for me um and it's just one of those things that I so encourage, you know, new composers or any kind of composer, you know, no matter where you are in your career, listen, listen, listen to that, to music and try to figure out what's going on. Sit by the piano, sit by the, you know, your samples and just try to recreate because you're going to learn so much from it. Um, and it's helped me. It's like, it's everything for me. I feel like, you know, the composer I am today is because mainly... Not mainly, but a big part of it is is because of that. Just listening and listening and trying to figure out how does the orchestra sound when they play. And so, um, besides that, I just want, to, just want to say, so whatever I hear, that's what I try to mock up. Meaning, there's probably lots of voicings and in the orchestration that I haven't gotten right. Because you will hear when I play just the strings that it feels kind of empty. And yes, I agree. Orchestrationally, it is very empty. And if I were to write this or something similar myself, I 
for myself, I would have done that differently uh, because I do enjoy orchestration and it just feels kind of empty. But the reason it feels empty is because I'm focusing mainly on the brass and I couldn't really make out what's going on here. This is what I heard. So I'm just going to record what I hear. So we're going to start here um, using both, as usual, in my studio strings, spiccatos and the fluid, uh, fluid shorts. Fluid runs. Yeah, it's not called runs. <laughs> oh man, I don't want to call it that. Fluid shorts by performance samples. So we just have this little opening phrase that they're playing. Very basic, you know, just humanized some of these velocities so it doesn't sound too robotic. Uh, same thing with these guys. And as you can hear, they're naturally a little bit, you know, slight different semi-tuning from, from these. So together, they just feel kind of nice. And so for this piece, I wanted to mimic as much as I could this room they're in, which is very unique when you hear the the the, the piece. I'm gonna post a link in the in description. Um, so there's like no reverb here. I'm just using the room that Jasper from Performance Samples used. Uh, for this one and here, I'm adding a little bit of this Todd AO that I've talked about in my other videos. It's just uh, inside Space Designer. I uh, not implemented, but what do you call it? Yeah, so I dragged it in here. Uh, it's just a room simulating that room taught AO. You could use any reverb that you have that you feel is a good room. And it's just boosting that a little bit. Same thing with the basses, just playing that one note. Got a little bit more of that room here, as you can see. Um, but this is very basic stuff here, as long as, you know, I felt like, yeah, that's kind of similar to that original recording. I mean, it can't be exactly the same. And so when it comes to the French horn, the start off the, the melody here, we have, as you can see, a lot of sample modeling, brass, French horns, because of their playability. They are so flexible and they add the realism, as I've talked about, when you when you layer that layer them with whatever other brass you have. So in this case, I'm using cinema, cinematic studio brass, uh, by themselves, they sound beautiful, but I need a little bit more of that playability and realism. Especially this right here. Ah, that sounded a little not the best. So when I double that, as I do with the French horns here, And as you can see, I really you just have to use expression for these guys. And it's so important, you know, you get the feel of how the player would play and it just feels realistic because you're able to tweak it so nicely with uh, sample modeling. So together, I think it sounds very good. Almost a little on the edge of facing right there. I try always to try to get rid of that by tweaking the master tune 40, 4, 440 but then ah, slightly up and down to see if you can get that little more realism when they're edging a little bit uh, so for this again Todd AO that I just showed the reverb uh, you can use whatever room you have so here if I instead let me see yeah let's do it on that one instead on this guy I have the same reverb as you can see and then let's just use Valhalla Looks like this. It's just kind of the first preset. It starts with a uh, small room, so just 1.72 seconds in decay. Full mix, depth to about 50. It's kind of standard how it starts. And you can hear it's pretty much the same as my Todd AO. So for these guys, you obviously need that reverb. Otherwise, as I've shown before, they're extremely dry. Yeah, it's a dead room. So I wanted that room, obviously, this reverb to be on everything. Usually, I don't have this particular reverb on everything, only the brass, the Todd AO. Um, but for this recording, I just want to try to simulate that. So very important that they play and use expression as much as you can to really get this singing, singing kind of phrase.
And then together we also have Cas Caspian French horns from performance samples again. Add a little bit more of, yeah, a different tone. Again with the same reverb, you see. Horns panned a little to the left. And... So since you can, you know, pan these guys however you want. Got one French horn here, one here, one here, one here. Feels kind of realistic. Um, yeah, sounds great together with Caspian and Cinematic Studio Brass. Just by themselves, it's great. But then you get a little more realism. So please get sample modeling and make sure you always use them with the reverb. Otherwise, you're going to be discouraged at first. You're going to feel this is the driest piece of crap I've ever heard. But it's actually amazing. So they're just kind of doing this. Yeah, that sounds, you know, as close as I can get with what I have. And I, I just feel that it's, uh, yeah, pretty realistic. Um, Staccato strings here doing the same. We even have violas here. Violas pan to the left. I usually have to the right, but I could hear something in that recording. It's just on one low C, I think. Yeah, that is the lowest note there on the viola. And they may not even actually play this, but I heard something on that note and it was a rhythm. So I was like, hmm, could it be? Really nothing fancy there. Just make sure, you know, panning is right and a little bit of that reverb to get that realism for this piece. In general, I would never just use it this dry if you've seen my other videos. So moving on, uh, yeah, these guys just come into the very end. As you can hear in the piece, they just color that one note. Berlin woodwinds, same reverb, a little bit more of the tail that I've talked about before. I have them on some of these tracks. Um, which is just a long tail. I encourage that always. Have one room and then the other thing for tail, just to get that glue, you know, when you hear it fade out. That long kind of thing. Dream Hall, this is called in Space Designer. Use whatever you got. You can use Valhalla. Long, here's a 4.3 second decay. Uh, but it's just mainly for, for a kind of natural, beautiful fading out. Now let's get to the trumpets, which, you know, was the main part and reason why I wanted to do this. And yeah, as I just said in the beginning, uh, it's tricky. And uh, I don't feel I have or that there are any libraries out there. If there are, then please, you know, link them for, to me. Um, that can do this kind of top line uh, that have that bite that just a one trumpet can have, even if they're playing in octaves, which I think they are. Uh, so I'm using, as usual, to uh, double it with cinematic, I mean, sample modeling. I have to have way more reverb here around it, otherwise it just feels too dry. By itself, you know, sounds pretty cute when he's up there alone, even if he's wrapped around reverb. Sounds pretty, uh, yeah, just funny, because it's such a thin sound. Um, So that, then on top of... Again, Cinematic Studio Brass, the trumpet's here. And I'm going to show a little bit here of this phrase because it has some issues. So quickly, for those who know, you know, you can use key switches. Um, I hate normally using that, but I was too lazy to load in another instance of the library. So here we have this set to staccato, but then you can see staccato is also controlled with where you are with the modulation. So at here, it's something called repetitions, which is just a fast attack. If I set the mod wheel, mod wheel higher, you get staccato, staccatissimo, or something, or reversed. But it doesn't control anything of the velocities. So when I jump up here to hit this marcato note with this key switch, it makes this weird little glitch. Not very pretty. Uh, I could have probably, you know, avoided that by just loading another instance. So, and just doubling with this.
makes it sound a lot better. This is about as close as I can get with that kind of bites that you can hear in the original. It's still not nearly as great, but it's good enough for what I can do. Uh, yeah, sample modeling, make sure you use the expression so much because it's everything. Once again, goes back to just listen, listen, listen to recordings. Uh, we're doing the same thing with these trumpets, also cinematic brass, studio brass, just an octave below. No fancy settings, just a little bit of the reverb, barely because the room is already good. But thanks to this guy up here, you get that bite. A little bit of it at least, which is great. Um, pretty standard here. I think for this, I needed to EQ a little bit of the high end away. Yeah, you can see it's minus 7 dB around 10K. Boosted a little bit more of the low end at about 120 because they do sound pretty thin. Um, just by themselves, you can barely hear the difference. But for this track, I really felt ah, they're too sharp. Or too bright, I mean. Like, ooh, that uh, normally works for me. I usually don't EQ it, but for this, yeah, and I removed a little bit also here around three, between three and four K to get rid of that annoying sound. So those three here playing this in octaves. And then we got a little, another trick. So this is trailer brass, French horns. Uh, the Adventure Patch, I think it is. I pitched them up an octave, and they sound really funny by themselves. By themselves. Almost sounds like some old sport brass from some sports show from the 80s. Uh, and um, together, it just kind of gives a little bit more of that attack that I that I wanted. Barely any room, very little. The room itself is pretty good. Uh, but in combination. Works pretty nicely. Uh, so that's the trumpets there. You know, that's what I could do to, to try to mimic that sound. Uh, but you can't get away from live players. They're just going to be amazing and... and uh, if you've had that experience, uh, you know, and if you haven't, and yeah, I really hope you do, because it, it really is that amazing thing that you can't mimic all the way. You can get close. Uh, brass doing the same. They have the same settings, obviously. One French one here. Didn't need to be that careful with the expression here. Um, because it sounded pretty good but the way it was. And then we have Caspian here. Yeah, they sound really good with that attack. Reverb, you see that? More room on those guys. We have angry French horns coming in. Actually, I used them here before, I forgot. And they are also from Performance Apples. Free stuff. Sound great uh, in, in with doubling. Uh, pretty good by themselves, too. But no key switches. They just are very playable, too. And I love that. Uh, and again, with the Cinematic Studio Brass this time, it's the four French one patch. Decent, I like the sound, but yeah, the playability there with the key switches, once again, it could have been better if I load another instance. But together, they work nicely. So yeah, it's a good, pretty good sound. Right, and then here, just in the end, adding a little bit of the sample mod modeling trombones. I couldn't actually hear any trombones in the recording. Uh, so it must be there, though. 
just doing, you know, the chords, the triads. Uh, let me just solo the sample modeling. It sounds kind of cute. It's very simple, simply played. Uh, not minding too much the expression and not too much reverb because I still wanted a little bit of that bite. But these are just for like a little shadow down there. We get stress of trombones as well. Very nice. They're thicker though. Same there with the mod wheel. You know, express yourself to be a little corny there. But seriously, do that. Um, and then tuba, very basic. CSB again, cinematic. Just sounds good together to get that low end. So this is what I heard. They may be voicing things completely differently. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty standard for what the chords are. Can't say it now by heart. Have to again play it. Um, uh, so yeah, really nothing fancy down here. More details. French horns there to the left. Work those trumpets as much as you can with the sample modeling doubling. Works really nicely on the cinematic studio brass. Strings, as if you heard here before, um, these are very, very basic, as I said. So I would most likely voice this way different, and he probably most likely did, since, you know, he's a great orchestrator. And uh, this is what I heard just coming in here. so on and so forth and uh, nothing fancy there at all we just got these you know the great vista strings from performance samples just doubling the trumpets because i wanted it to be a little bit more spread out i don't think he does that just sounded better uh, to get that kind of combination sorry not there for the high melody i actually have the cinematic pseudo strings this is playing another note in the chord Okay, so that's the strings. I just wanted to defend my honor a little bit there because as you can hear the voicings here, it's a bit empty. Um, but it works because the brass is really doing all the heavy lifting there. Especially there is no viola here in the middle section. It feels empty in the chord. But yeah, it works for the whole mock-up. Um, I don't think there's anything more I can mention. Uh, it was just, it was fun. I use a little bit of 8DO timpani here. Pretty natural the way they are. Haven't changed anything. Added just barely any reverb. Uh, let's see. Yeah, just be mindful of, you know, velocities for, for when you use timpani. Don't have them maybe hit 127 in the velocity. Um, just a little bit makes it more realistic unless you have a super fortissimo passage but still they sound better when they're not played like a maniac a little bit of their cymbal rolls nothing fancy a little glockenspiel from la drama drums from uh, audio bro very basic yeah very busy that guy a uh, harp from vista strings it's included uh, from performance samples it's really nice to play it just works for a little flavor So it's such an interesting attack. Almost like a suction before it. I don't know really what that is, if it's intentional or if I get a, a bad copy. Uh, but I like it in, in the context of things. It's, and it's nice to play. Yeah. All right, I don't want to talk too much. This is such a short piece. Uh, so I hope this was helpful in some way. And yeah, like I said, I encourage you to listen to things, make mock-ups. 
try to figure out on the piano what's going on, train your ears, and, and you just be able to hear stuff way better. And it's so much fun, really. I love it so much. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, that's about it. I'm not going to play the track again. <laughs> you already heard it. Uh, but yeah, all right. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care, guys and girls.